the ultimate system would be that you walk up to a, you know, you want to get on an airplane and you give somebody your passport or your, your driver's license and you stick your hand in a box and it instantly will go to this database and it will say these fingerprints do belong to this person, which is who this driver's license belongs to. The basic idea of the 3D Fingerprint Project is to, is to very, very quickly acquire fingerprint scans of all five fingers in under 10 seconds. And so our specific approach to it is to use an array of projectors and cameras such that we can actually take 3D measurements of the finger or the entire hand with sufficient resolution as to actually measure the fingerprint ridges. It's, it's entirely non-contact. The uh, law enforcement world, what we're providing is kind of like a finger or handprint DNA. Uh, they, even though they, in the end, they store in a large database just the fingertips and maybe the palm data, really locally they like to have the whole uh, set of data, the entire hand. With it in 3D, we can actually uh, reverse engineer latent prints. So if they have a, a small set of suspects and they get the full hand scan of them, they can actually section out where they want to look at and possibly match right away. So it's going to give them a lot more data, a lot more options. Face recognition research is, is well, it's actually, I don't want to say it's, it's mature, because if I say mature, people think it works really well, and it doesn't. It's been around. It's a problem that's been around a really, really long time, uh, and now that there's so much, there's so much, you know, the, the interest in software and so on. It's really moved from a research lab, you know, academia. It's really moved into industry. When you you project a pattern from from a projector, well, the camera, when it sees that at an angle, it sees a warped, you know, it sees a warped version of that image. So it's based upon that, or, or we call it modulation. But it's like, based upon the warping of that pattern, then I should be able to figure out what the shape of the surface that I'm looking at is. And then you have a camera looking down at an angle. And when it's looking down at an angle, and you're looking at a face, those lines warp around the face. Face scanning was, was something I, I kind of uh, uh, started uh, uh, as far as uh, our collaboration with Dr. Lau, I think the composite pattern for motion, uh, that was when we first started uh, collaborating on 3D data acquisition. Uh, so uh, my, my component on that project is to get um, moving facial expressions and things like that. We're working with a company called General Giant Studios in uh, Hollywood and trying to do uh, face uh, gesture uh, capture so that we can capture uh, somebody talking or making expressions and they can use that for special effects purposes. Uh, other, other projects we have are surveillance. We're trying to capture uh, 3D uh, uh, bodies, faces for identification purposes and things like that. Well, in the, the, the face recognition and the fingerprint, you know, the actual scanning process is the same. If we talk about sensors, we're focusing on sensor development. So the application is what changed, but all the applications, is, it's, I mean, it's the exact same application. The only difference was that when you go from faces to fingerprints, you simply figure out how do I shrink down my camera and projector fields of view from being face size to fingerprint size. Well, the next step is the, uh, the interlacing of the three-dimensional data from multiple cameras. That is, right now, is the, the, the thing that's not just going to help us in fingerprint, uh, but all of our technologies. Uh, merging of data, three-dimensional data, is a really difficult chore that really hasn't been fully solved industry-wide. And so a lot of our research effort in the uh, uh, fingerprint side, also in the industrial side with Toyota, uh, with General Giant, uh, with other uh, partners that we have, that is are one of our highest priorities. I think the issue is not so much what can we do, the question is what's the requirements definition. 
This is a technology of convenience, more so than it is a, than it is a, a way to weed out you know, terrorists, as I think most people suspect, because it's just going to uh, it's just going to make proving who you are to somebody much easier, and it'll just be most more convenient for most people. Because, like I said, the lines will go faster at the airport, if nothing else.